The Dog That Dug for Dinosaurs. A long, long time ago, there was a little dog named Trey. He was black and white all over. He had friendly brown eyes and a very wiggly tail. Trey lived in England. Trey was a real dog, and this is an honestly true story about him. Trey loved two things most in the whole world. First, he loved Mary Anning. She was 12 years old and lived with her family in a small cottage near the beach in Lyme Regis. Secondly, Trey loved going with Mary to dig for fossils. So, what are fossils anyway? They are the remains of animals and plants that died a long time ago. When a leaf or bone gets pressed between layers of sea mud, it leaves an imprint. After many, many years, the mud hardens to rock. Trey and Mary knew that they would find the very best fossils high up on the cliffs around the beach. They climbed up there every day. Trey sniffed the rocks. Sniff, sniff. He pawed the dirt. Scratch, scratch. Mary used a small hammer and chisel. Tap, tap, tap. With these tools, Mary carefully cut fossils out of the cliff, just as her father had shown her. Trey watched and she placed the fossils in her basket. Most of them looked like seashells. Mary and Trey sold them as souvenirs to the tourists that came by stagecoach to swim at the beach near their home. One day, Trey and Mary discovered some very large bones sticking out of the rocks. They were huge. Trey growled and tried to dig the bones out. Mary used her hands to brush away the loose dirt. Trey, we've discovered a monster, she declared. The bones were much too big for Trey and Mary to remove by themselves. I'll go for help, Mary said. You stay here, Trey. Trey barked loudly and sat down in front of the bones. He was a very good guard dog. Mary ran all the way back to town and asked some grown-ups to help her. Trey and I have found something really special in the cliff, she told them. Just wait and see. When the men saw the giant rib bones in the side of the cliff, they were amazed. What a beast, they cried. Look at those sharp teeth. Is it a crocodile, one man asked, or a stubby whale? We don't know what it is, Mary admitted, but we know it's something special, don't we, Trey? Trey yipped and wagged his tail. A rich man who lived nearby heard about the sea monster. He hurried to see it for himself. I'll buy it, he cried. I will give it to the British Museum in London. Do you know what it is, Mary asked? It is called an ichthyosaur, the man told her. That means fish lizard, he explained. It's like a dinosaur with fins. The amazing news spread about the gigantic fish lizard and the dog and little girl who had found it. Soon many strangers came to Lyme Regis where Mary and Trey lived. They all wanted to hunt for fossils too. The men wore tall top hats. The women wore frilly bonnets. They carried pretty umbrellas called parasols. Mary shook her head and smiled. She rubbed Trey's soft ears. They watched the strangers together. They don't have the right tools, Miss Mary whispered. They are wearing the wrong kinds of shoes. Aren't they silly, Trey? Trey yipped and chased his tail. Curious scientists visited Lyme Regis, too. One man came from the university in Oxford. His name was William Buckland. He went to the old carpenter shop where Mary and Trey sold their fossils. Can you show me where you found your ichthyosaur, young lady? He asked politely. Do you think you could find the exact spot again? Trey can find it, Mary boasted. 
Together, Mary and Mr. Buckland followed the little dog across the beach and up to the cliffs. Trey sniffed the rocks. Sniff, sniff. He pawed the dirt. Scratch, scratch. Suddenly, he yipped. Then he sat down. Mary pointed. It was the exact place where she had discovered the strange fish lizard. What an intelligent dog, Mr. Buckland declared. Trey wagged his tail. Trey and Mary continued to dig for fossils. They were very careful. Mary watched for falling rocks like her dad told her. Trey looked out for storms and high tides. Then one day, they discovered another giant creature. Look, Trey, Mary cried. Is it a sea dragon? Trey sniffed the skeleton and snapped at it with his teeth. The creature had a long, long neck. Its backbone was like a humped turtle shell. Instead of feet and legs, it had four large paddles. But it wasn't a sea dragon. Mr. Buckland call it a pleasa sore. One day, Trey and Mary found a fossil that no one in England had ever found before. This one had huge bony wings like a bat and a, and a long sharp jaw. Trey growled. It looks like a gigantic flying lizard, Mary declared. The scientists thought so too. And that's why they named it pterodactyl. That means lizard with wings. Over the years, Trey, Mary, and Mr. Buckland became good friends. They showed him where to find the best fossils in Lyme Regis. Mr. Buckland brought books about dinosaurs for Mary. He brought beef bones for Trey. Mary, with Trey on her lap, studied her books every day. When Trey's whiskers turned gray and Mary was all grown up, they still collected fossils and sold them in the old carpenter's shop. There were boxes and baskets filled with fossils on the floor and on the shelves. Some of the fossil creatures were so big they couldn't fit through the door. Sometimes children and tourists stopped in to buy fossils of ancient sand dollars or tiny fish and curly shells. Many scientists came to the shop to buy fossils too. They brought carts and wagons to haul away the really large ones. Trey and Mary Anning became very famous. Today, if you go to the National History Museum in London, you can see the large fossils they discovered together. You can also see a famous painting of Mary holding her fossil basket and Trey the dog that dug for dinosaurs. <laughs>